Thank you for tuning in to WOPN's The Ugly Truth About. I am Relationship Coach Sadie, and today I have here with me Carol, Jadi, and Zhang. We're going to discuss the ugly truth about your husband's mistress. Why do women date married men? Hopefully by the end of the show, you'll have your answer to that question. Stay tuned. Single woman, married man, a known combination destined to fail. Yet, many women choose this path. Coming up, the diverse panel of the Women of Power Network respond to the following short film and discuss in detail the mindset of women in their relationships with married men. Next on The Ugly Truth About Your Husband's Mistress. Hello, Sheila. Yes, this is Sheila. Sheila, you need to come outside. I got something to tell you. I'm sorry, who was this? And you are? Is James here? Excuse me? Sheila, James and I have been together for nine months, and he is leaving you. Really? Really? You know what? Come on inside. James, the woman you're leaving me for is here. What the hell is going on, James? Will someone please tell me what's going on? James and I have been together for months, and he is supposed to be telling you that he is leaving you. I've never seen this woman a day in my life. Oh, you never seen me before, James? You want to act like when you spent the night at my house last week when Sheila was looking for you? Nina, you're a slut. Get out of my house! Oh, I'm a slut now, James? You're supposed to be leaving her. You said you weren't happy in your marriage and you wanted to be with me. I do not want you. How long have you been a jump off? You don't act like you don't care about me now, James, just because Sheila here. Sweetheart, that's how he's gonna act. I am his wife. He committed his life to me. And I have his children. He said he was leaving you. Obviously, I'm not. It was all a lie, Nina. I am not leaving my family. It's over. I do not want you. I never did. I just told you that just because I just wanted you to stop asking me when was I leaving. Nina, get the hell out of my house. Get out. Get out of my house now. Get out of my house now. Bounce. That's right. Bounce, ho. You're nothing but a home wreck. How did you do this to me? Woman, you're crying? 
What did you expect, Nina? You have issues. You need to see a doctor for that. Do not bring your problems into my home. I have issues, James? Why? Because I told you about what my father did to me? I trusted you with that. And you just put it out in the street like that? I thought you cared about me. That is not my problem. You knew what I wanted. I am so sorry. You know what, girl? I hope you learn from this. I hope you learn from this. Most married men do not leave their wives. If they say they are, they're not. If he was gonna leave his wife, he'd have been single when you met him. But you know what, though? You're too good for James. Hell, I'm too good for James. You know what, Sheila? You do deserve better. Because he was bringing your daughter to see me. What? We was having sex Why? without condoms. Why? What? Raw. And he never pulled out. I could have had babies for you. You gonna come to my home, disrespect my family? Oh, you got to go. Let's go. What is wrong with you? Get off of her. a lot of people today, James. Me, your wife, our daughter, yourself, and Nina. You saw a vulnerable woman who had a rough childhood, and instead of having some compassion for her, you decided to get what you could get, a good time. You know, that was a very dark and ugly thing to do. I gave you my love, a family, my hand in marriage, and I have been a strong wife for you. For you to sleep around on me, unprotected, and risk my life, my children, and possibly having a child outside of this marriage is unforgivable. Don't, believe it, baby. Don't even talk to me. You know what, you are a selfish person. The way you used that poor girl and threw her out just now was disgusting. She's a slut. Don't even talk to me. I'm strong. I'm going to be okay. What do you think is going to happen to Nina? You never thought about how your actions were going to affect her. Forget you never her. thought about how your actions were going to affect this family. You know what? I'm done with you. I'm done with this marriage. Don't come back in this house. Baby, baby, hold on, baby. Selfish. That's the absolutely first thing. Absolutely selfish. That's mm -hmm. exactly what came to mind. He was just absolutely selfish. He didn't think about himself. Mm -hmm. He didn't think about his kids. He didn't think about his wife. He didn't think about the mistress. All he thought about was his needs, his own mm -hmm. personal needs. And mm -hmm. he wasn't even thinking strategically enough to say, how is this going to affect me in the future? Yeah. Because he screwed himself too. I put myself immediately in the place of the mother having five children. And when I saw that mistress strutting her stuff up that sidewalk, my heart was racing and I was mm -hmm. grieved and I actually was starting to get very emotional. And then when the guy said that you're a slut and I was thinking, well, what do you call a man who's a slut? Exactly. He's yeah. the slut <laughs> too. Mm -hmm. And I so admire that woman, the mother. I think I would have cried and fell apart. But she was so confident and so kind and compassionate, even to the mm -hmm. mistress. Mm -hmm. I think right around those lines, too, uh, her compassion sort of came through when she said, what you saw was a vulnerable woman 
right. who had issues. And in my mind, the first thing I thought of as a man, did you really pick up that she had issues <laughs> or was there something else going on? Because you're right. When she got out of the car, I'm not sure that I saw any issues except her attitude. Uh, and whether or not he was reacting to any of that, maybe in the time that he was with her, he learned of that. But I'm not sure that instinctively or on the first sort of take, that's really what he saw. I don't know. I think with this film in particular, you're looking at three very different individuals. You're looking at a very selfish man, a selfless wife, and a herd mistress. And on that level, I personally was surprised by the selfless wife, which um, my, my immediate assumption of how the wife would react would just be catty, fights, you know, what the hell are you doing disrespecting me, cheating on me? She brought in the uh, how how compassionate she was for the mistress's past for for hurting the children the family and that to me was really shocking but in a very refreshing way to see somebody reach that level of maturity especially um from uh, a wife who's just been cheated on so do you guys yeah. think something like this can really happen or like do you think this is just like yeah. i was a bit surprised Definitely. Um, I, I picture the reaction of the wife, again, to be completely different. Um, the, the mistress was definitely a very bold move in terms <laughs> of, you know, walking up to the house. You know, the, the, the child is in the house. The husband, the wife are all there. And um, for, for me, I, I think it was a bold yet um, strong move. You know, she, she, she definitely did it in the sense that I'm sure she's not looking to hurt the wife, and it has to end in that is either the wife or her, and um, and for for that I definitely give my props to the the mistress. It, it, it takes a lot of courage. I think the mistress was very smart. She picked a very vulnerable time mm -hmm. to confront the woman. She just had a baby, mm -hmm. so she expected the woman to fall apart, and maybe. She expected him to leave her because she was so, maybe she was more attentive to the children. Mm -hmm. And he might have left her because he was so selfish with his physical needs. Mm -hmm. That's true. What do you guys think yeah. that made this man do what he did? Why do men do things like this? Why do people do things like this? I mean, women cheat too. Why, why mm -hmm. do people do things like this when they're in committed relationships? They just had children. They, have a house. they obviously had a home together. Right. What makes people do things I think like sometimes this? it's just... Mm -mm. Uh, exciting, something mm -hmm. different. Um, I would like to think that maybe the excitement doesn't exist in the relationship as it is, and so they look for something outside of it because, I don't know, again, well, I'll go back to that point that he was selfish. He was only thinking about himself, so mm -hmm. there was some pleasure, um, and I'm not insinuating, although I'm sure I'm insinuating, um, that there's some sexual pleasure to that. Mm -hmm. um, but that there's other things going on, and I think that if you look at the difference between the two women, they weren't the same kind of person. Right. And I think, I'll go back to sort of my own reaction to the scenario. I didn't expect for the wife to be so kind and sort of so understanding. Mm -hmm. I expected him to say, I don't know this woman. You did expect that? I don't that? know who she yeah. is. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know why. I've not been in the situation. I think that you just sort of hear stories, whether it's in the media yeah. or your friends are telling you about something tragic, because to mm -hmm. me it's tragic, right. that sort of happens like this. And in my mind, I always envision the man sitting back to say, I don't know who she is. But he did say it, though, right? No, 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 that's what I'm saying. Right, right, okay. I expected I that. that was kind of bold. Mm -hmm. I feel like I never saw this like a <laughs> damn. <laughs> I think at that stage he disrespected everybody. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And too, because absolutely. Because he actually had the nerve to sit there and lie in front of yeah. her face and say, I've never saw this woman damn for my yeah. life. But he quickly knew that that lie wasn't enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because that, that story yeah. completely changed, you know. Yeah. She was um, completely grounded. She knew yeah. what she was going to say. It almost yeah. even felt like the mistress sort of came in with a rehearsed plan mm -hmm. for how she was going to do it. And it started with a phone call. Like, why would you call from right outside the door mm -hmm. and then just hang up? But you know what I found interesting? In the wording next to the character James, mm -hmm. it said that he had recently ended it with his mistress and was trying to focus on his marriage. Yeah. So uh -huh. now my question is, why did she come to the house? She was mad. But she yeah. came to the house talking about James supposed to be leaving you. Because in her mind, that's her man. But he ended it. <laughs> yeah, but she's not, she wasn't mm -hmm. ready to end it. Mm -hmm. I think that men, and I don't know, maybe it's just my, my own thought, that men sort of get into this and it's a game of some sorts. Like he said to her, you, you're nobody. 
right? But I'm not sure that she interpreted it the same way because mm-hmm. every time he lied to her to, you know, keep her from coming to the house and keep her from sort of getting in his life, she believed it. And, you know, I'll go back to the wife's sort of situation. Yeah, she's a vulnerable woman who's looking for a man to care for him. And she probably was getting exactly that from him. She wasn't distinguishing the fact that this relationship is real versus not because whatever she wanted, she got. And that's sort of what I was getting from it. And he he was very honest to say, I lied because I wanted you to go away, but I'm not sure that she believed it was a lie. Her coming up to the house to to finally break it down to the wife that this is what's been going on behind your back could be extra incentive for the wife to leave the relationship. And as a result, a husband not having a wife to, or, 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 or a marriage to focus on, you know. I, I, I'm, I think the mistress might have been surprised too, even though it wasn't heavily focused on in the video, that the wife reacted so compassionately and instead of, uh, I'm packing up the bags, I'm taking the daughter and we're leaving. I have a question for each of you. Mm-hmm. I want to start with Carol. Carol, being married 25 years, do you think if the tables were turned and the way the scenario ended, that the wife didn't throw the husband out and they tried to work it out. Do you think you could have worked through something, say, like that at your 10 or 15 year mark of your marriage and made it to 25? Do you think something like that can be worked out? I think so. And even the woman herself was very protective of the husband at first when the mistress first came in. And she was kind of saying, he's mine, he's my husband. And then later on, she thought about it as he was reacting to the mistress and how he treated her. and it. And I think that she realized that maybe she would be better off without him. But still, the story's not ended. Just because she threw him out at that time, that's all a very emotional response. And I just, I just have a feeling that they're going to work things out because he ended it with the mistress before she confronted him and found out about the so you situation. Think, you think after he was standing on the porch... At yeah. At some point. Yeah. They worked it out and got back together. I think so. I'm and just optimist. I think so. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, if I put myself <clears throat> in the position of the wife, she is a very different kind of person in my mind. Um, her reaction was not that that I had anticipated. Not that I thought that she was going to come out all ghetto and get, you know, crazy mm-hmm. with her. I'm even surprised that it took her that long and that she was able to keep her composure the way that she did to wait until after everything was said and done to say, okay, now I'm done. Um, and I don't know if it's emotional. If I had to put myself in the position of that wife and I was Jotty and not her, <laughs> I, it, it would have been a whole other movie. It would have been a whole other movie. <laughs> because I think that at the point that she left, he was going to leave too. Mm-hmm. And there wasn't going to be a chance for us to talk about it. Um, and maybe it's just because I'm thinking about my reaction in that moment. Right. Because I think that there's a difference between thinking about what I would do right then and there and what I would do a couple weeks later. I don't know what the dynamics of that relationship are like. I don't know if she too is a stay-at-home mom who mm-hmm. depends on him financially to make ends meet. Or well, if I think she's she was working because it says she was home on maternity leave. Okay. So I think she was working. Okay. So again, I don't, I don't know the, uh, sort of what other dynamics are playing into the relationship mm-hmm. and what the different needs are. Not that I would ever stay in a relationship because I needed anything um, because that's not me. Right. But I don't know. That over time, I, I may be with Carol to say, you know what? She let it sit. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was just one time. Because that's the other thing. We don't have enough information. My first thought was, well, maybe he's only been with her. Because she did say nine months. Mm -hmm. And I thought, she's on maternity leave. Was Mm -hmm. it something about dealing with her being pregnant that sort of led him to this something else? Uh, Is this their first child? Is this their second? Have this Mm -hmm. happened before? Is this the first time that he's discovered? So there's a lot that I would sort of need to understand about it. Um, But instinctively, oh no, he would have been right out the door right after her. He's going to come back to that door and he is going to grovel and he's going to (laughs) get down on his hands and knees and ask for forgiveness Mm -hmm. because he wants to be with his family. 
But don't, uh, let's hear from Jang and then we'll discuss mm -hmm. barriers and what's the crossing point that you don't cross when you're cheating in marriage. Because it sounds like he crossed that point. There's certain okay. things that are forgivable and there's certain things that it says it's time to move on. Yeah. Just as a relationship coach, that's what I, the advice I would give my clients. Mm -hmm. What would you say about that, Jang? Um, so I think in different aspects that we broke it down emotionally, I feel from watching the video, she seems like a really strong individual. So she doesn't need um, a husband or is, is a husband who, who, who's cheated on her to, to, I guess, serve as a partner emotionally for the rest of her life. There are other men out there. I'm sure she'll find her match. Financially, if she's working, um, I believe that she should be in a very comfortable position to, to support her. Now, my only uh, thinking as to why she could allow this relationship to continue is for the purpose of the child, to have a father to grow up with, to have just this stable fam family role model example of having both the mother and father there on Christmas Day or um, when, when, when the child is turning two or three or four, you know. So, so it, it really depends and, and I definitely agree that a lot more information needs to be given to make um, a more accurate uh, conclusion as okay. to what she'll be doing. Yeah. One of the things that I heard that was very interesting that the first thing they said to me is because a lot of times I, I tell my clients, I'll tell them, you know, when you face each other and you're making your marriage vows, the reason they make you face each other is because when you're looking at that person, what's going to happen is you're going to start to see yourself in an image that you never saw yourself in before when you get married. Mm -hmm. Things that you didn't know about yourself are going to start to come to the surface because you're looking in the mirror. And that person's gonna show up everything about you and you can either accept it and work on it to become a better person or you can pack up and leave because you can't accept these things about yourself. And when those two looked in the mirror, there's, they saw things in each other that I'm sure she kinda knew was there. But when you commit to a person forever, that's that number eight infinity, then you're gonna go through things. But you never stop respecting your mate. You're never supposed to stop respecting your mate. Even when you're having a tough time and like for instance, mm -hmm. James is obviously his lust got the best of him. But he lost respect for himself, for his wife and for his children when he had unprotected sex outside the marriage. Mm -hmm. That's, if it was my client, I would say, okay, your husband cheated, you guys have kids together. We can work this out. Yeah. But now if my client tells me, well, you know, Coach Sadie, Every time he steps out that door, or every time we sleep together, I'm going to be concerned now, am I contracting mm -hmm. an STD? How do I tell her to live with that? How can she really enjoy their sex life anymore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean when I talk about those barriers, mm -hmm. crossing certain barriers. It sounds like he crossed a point of no return. Yeah. And I think that's actually why the wife changed her position when the mistress said that, because as you pointed out, Carol, she was protecting him at first. And I think she realized that her husband crossed the point of no return. She was very clear, though, to even talk about what you just mentioned with vows and how important that was. And, you know, he made a vow to me, to our family, to this home. He's not leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, this is sort of before the unprotected sex piece came out. Yeah. And so uh, if I have to speak from sort of where I see her position, um, this is a woman who clearly made a vow to this man and who would probably do whatever she could to sort of work to maintain this marriage. And, you know, I'll go back to Carol. Will she sort of open the door when he comes back? I don't know. If, if we sort of speak from it now, adding that dynamic piece about unprotected sex, I'll go back to Jody. Yeah, he's out the door right after her. Mm -hmm. um, and when he comes back, it, it may be at the gate that he comes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he'd get as close that to the door. That is a very good point, but let me tell you a personal story. I had three young children, age three, one and a half, and a newborn, and there was a terrible argument between my husband and I, and we separated for a time, and I, I thought this was it. I thought, this is it. This is the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if it involved another woman. We were apart. It was a short time. I never asked, but I never thought during that time that we would ever get together, but we did. We, we reconciled, and we had two more beautiful children. And I'm not saying it's going to be a happy ending for me. Mm -hmm. There's been so many struggles. It is really hard 
to be in a long-term marriage these days. Mm -hmm. There's just too many temptations on both sides. There's too many struggles. There's financial struggles. There's struggles with children. There have been struggles with illness. Um, there's been struggles raising a child. My youngest has autism. It is just unbelievable um, to have these types of things thrown into your life and think that you're going to be one of those few that make it to 25 or past. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of optimistic, but yes, the STD is really a big issue. Um, I can see her being really frightened for, for her actual life. I think that all relationships are challenged. Um, <coughs> some by just day-to-day -day living, um, and some by just bigger things like those that you've talked about. Um, and then I think that even if we're not in a, in a serious monogamous relationship as individuals, we sort of struggle with the same kinds of things. Um, in, in that situation, we're sort of making decisions for ourselves, but that we even find ourselves in this tug of war, like, which way do I go? What do I do? Um, and I think that the interesting thing about relationships is that you're going through that, where do I go? Not by yourself. And so it's a little bit different to talk about, at least from my perspective, to think about those kind of barriers as opposed to a barrier about intimacy. <clears throat> like, I am not sure that I could lay in a bed with a man who I know um, has been in another intimate relationship, has had unprotected sex, has sort of really exposed me, exposed me during that time, and I was probably the farthest thing from his mind, mm -hmm. completely. Like if I think about that barrier, yeah. as opposed to, you know, we're struggling financially and maybe I can't get those new shoes I want because we have mm -hmm. to pay rent, or we're not gonna be going out every weekend as we have been because it's a part of sort of the culture of our relationship to make ends meet. Those kind of challenges I see as a little bit different than this. The fact that you chose a woman, not that anyone would be okay, okay, because I'm not saying that's okay, but the fact that you chose a woman who would be bold enough to step foot into my house yeah. to tell me about your behavior outside of not only the confines of our home, but our relationship and our family, and I could add a whole bunch of more layers to that. To me, it is a completely different thing, completely mm -hmm. different. I don't know. I know, Carol, you and I had a conversation <coughs> about this before, and one thing that Carol had expressed that I think we needed to touch the topic of is that sometimes a wife, as Carol stated, is not necessarily in the wrong, but can a wife sometimes cause her husband to cheat by not handling her wifely duties? I mean, yes, she can, but what would that be? And, and how far should he go? Mm -hmm. You know, like, I know there's books out there about uh, that some mistresses have written and they say that a lot of times men are really apt to cheat when a woman is either pregnant or just had a baby because mm -hmm. she's paying that child so much attention and not that husband. But again, there's that barrier that he crossed, like, mm -hmm. but That know, barrier, I think, is actually a result of communication. I think couples fear the idea of honesty, of bluntly, on telling the individual as much as they love them which is probably the reason why they hold uh, back on being honest that here are a list of things that I'm not satisfied with as your husband or or as the wife and um, let's work on improving them fixing them if not I can't see myself being with you for another five ten more years and because of that honesty and, um, and not being able to, to reach that, that level, I feel is the reason why mistresses arise. And um, may, may, maybe one thing to consider for couples is, is, as difficult as it may be, you know, to work on being honest and, and work on knowing the fact that this is your soulmate that you've said your vows to. Right. This is the person that deserves to know the truth. This is the person that, as much as it may sound as criticism, is in fact a good thing that, that, that's, that you are tell, telling them what their problems are, what their issues are, and what they're not doing right. And, um, and really, in the long run, it saves a whole family, you know. Right, yeah. From so honesty, depression. sometimes yeah. it hurts, but it's like the best. And, right. uh, and a wife has to remember that she's married to her husband and not to her children. It's mm -hmm. really important to remember 
that her first love is her husband. And yes, yeah, she can be wonderfully attentive to the children. And I think what happens sometimes is the wife gets so thrilled during pregnancy and her whole focus is on the child that the thrill isn't with her husband anymore. Mm. It's not a bad thing, it's, it's life. But that's mm -hmm. why, you, like you said, you yeah. need open communication right. and plenty of dates. You know, yeah. it's really important <laughs> even while you're pregnant or right after you have a baby, right. go out on dates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try to renew that spark. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on the mistress here. Um, has anyone ever been a mistress or dealt with a guy who had a girlfriend? If so, why? Why? No? Mm -hmm. well, good, we're all on the same boat. <laughs> yeah, I, think, no. I think I've met guys who've had girlfriends yeah. and the minute that I have sort of cued that that's what's you know. going on, then I'm like, listen, you know. you, you, I can't do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't. So why would a woman do something like this? Why would a woman be in the position of Nina? How do you get there? She comes from a very hurt past. That, that was made very clear in the video. From that, when you lose your fatherly figure to such a devastating um, history, uh, I'm sure there's a big hole where, where she's looking for that replacement in the sense of a lover. And for a man to have cheated on his wife, the first thing she's thinking is not that this man has a wife, but that this man is ready to love me as much as my father has not done in the past. And so it's almost an act of desperation, I think, that, um, that, that she, she's not thinking so, so clearly about the people she's hurting. And in fact, it seems like it took several times of cheating with this man that she realize and find the courage to come to the house and tell the wife the truth. So, so I think that she comes from a very um, abnormal childhood, which can induce a woman to do a factor of things. And, um, and so she, she does have a certain level of justification for her acts, I think. I yeah. just think, I don't know, I don't know <laughs> all her story, but sometimes I think women who are single or separated or divorced go after married men because they're afraid of commitment. They're not available. They can't commit to them. They're not going to get married. But I think in this woman's case, she ended up falling in love with him. And she didn't expect to. And then she felt confident enough that, hey, if I fall in love with him, he's going to fall in love with me and he'll leave his wife. And she didn't care who she was going to hurt along the way. So I felt that at first she was very, very selfish. But I think the talk with the very calm and compassionate wife really uh, helped her a lot in dealing with some struggles that she was having. And what would you say, Yanni? I always wonder if the attention that you get from a married man is that much different than you would get from a man who is just yours. <clears throat> As a coach, I can tell you that the attention that women get from married men, which I personally I can't understand, would be totally different yeah. mm -hmm. than what they get. I mean, you think about this, they can't get the guy on the holidays, right? Mm -hmm. He can only speak to him certain times of the day right. when he can talk to yeah. you. And how many married men can stay out? <laughs> right, right. You know, so I, for the life of me, I personally don't understand it, but I do have clients that do prefer that, like Carol said. And some of them have been married, some of them have not been married. Uh, some of them have, I know one client that has been actually with one married man 13 years now. Yeah. I wonder too if there's some sort of appeal outside than just a physical appeal for a married man, um, because this one is taken. There must be a reason why this one is taken. They and I wonder if there's something to that. Like, I, I can't wrap my head around it. I really, really can't. I think it makes it more exciting. <clears throat> One of my uh, clients' response was, if he's married, then he can't cheat on me. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think they go after true? married men yeah. because it's thrilling, it's secretive, mm -hmm. it's exciting, yeah. it's something they've never experienced, possibly. And when they are together, the sex is probably so great because they don't see each other that often, you know? What could the benefits be? <laughs> are there any benefits? I mean, are there any It's benefits? all physical. Yeah. I think it, it, well, it. well, well, I think some of it's all, it is physical. There's also in, in this sort of imaginary world in my mind when I can sort of see this stuff playing out, um, is that the married man sort of caters to her. They go to places where he probably wouldn't bring his wife. He buys mm -hmm. her things that he 
probably wouldn't spend on his wife for. And psychologically, I think it's just a way to sort of make up for those differences. So I can't be with you on Christmas, so guess what? Your Christmas gift is going to be a heavy one. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> and, and who, but who doesn't like to sort of be pampered? And so right. in my mind, that's sort of what I see a mistress living is this temporarily, because it's not always there, mm -hmm. sort of glamorous life. You're right, the sex is probably amazing because mm -hmm. I got nobody else to be with mm -hmm. and you're probably gonna try something with me that you haven't done with your wife for whatever reason because there, there's gotta be some thrill to this. And so it's almost like going to, going to an amusement park and only going on the roller coasters. The merry-go-round is for your wife. Yeah, I don't wanna be there. <laughs> That's a good example. In fact, um, in terms of the benefits, I just wanted to, to jump in a, a little um, phrase, I guess. In China, mistresses, they have a term for it called uh, the, the golden canary. And what that term refers to is the fact that these mistresses are pampered heavily, you know, by state officials, higher um, officials up in the, the, the ladder of the government. And they're brought to spas. They're bought glamorous presents and taken out to great shows and essentially the idea is the the, the women are locked up as a bird and um, taken out of the cage at the pleasure of the man involved mm -hmm. and so I do agree with, with Jody in the sense that there is a lot of financial and heavily glamoured benefits to being a mistress. Have you guys ever seen a situation where, I know I have on television, where they kind of portray the husband to spend more time with the mistress? Like, I know there were a few movies, like a few uh, mobster movies that I saw, you know, he pulls up and the mistress is always in the car and the wife is at home when they ransack the house or whatever. But it's, and every time you see him, he's with his mistress. Yeah. Like, why would you say that a man would actually start to spend more time with his mistress than he does actually at home with his wife? What, what are the dynamics of that that would um, I think with the film, I, I just always assumed um, it's more dramatic and <laughs> yeah, definitely more more attractive for the audience. You know? Yeah, I think to, re to, to sort of react to your question about um, the married man spending more time with the mistress, I think that initially it's a game. And just like the mistress gets sucked up in this game and she starts to believe everything he says, I wonder, although in my mind they're few, um, that there are scenarios where this man sort of starts to fall into his own game. And he really does sort of like this woman in a different way that he did. Um, I, I, I can't speak to experience or to a, a particular person, um, but I would imagine that there have been cases where the man does in fact get divorced and stays with the mistress. Mm -hmm. Because I think that the more time they spend together, just like the mistress, is believing him, then he may really start to believe her. What, why would she lie? She's with him already. And that he may sort of start to weigh the pros and cons of, well, I am happier when I'm with her. And I, and I wonder, in those, in those cases, how successful those relationships are. Because I think mm -hmm. to go back to something Carol said, there is certainly a thrill to being with somebody who you know that you're not supposed to mm -hmm. be with. Mm -hmm. And does that end at the point when you say, I'm going to make this mistress my wife, mm -hmm. it's not the same anymore. And he may want to escape his former life. You know, yeah. it can be really stressful having yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of children, and he might want just a new life for himself. Mm -hmm. And the mistress provides a, an escape. Yeah. And also, the mistress might come across as being more understanding. Wow, you really, you know me so much, and we only met, and you're so understanding, and you listen to me, whereas my wife is always nagging and never listens to a word that I say. So it's a false sense of security, though. Oh, yeah. Just wait. There are women mm -hmm. out there that are watching us today that may be dealing with someone who mm -hmm. has, a boyfriend, has a girlfriend, excuse me, or maybe dealing with a guy that's not necessarily committing to them in a way that he should be mm -hmm. um, with all that she's sharing of herself. There may be a woman that's dealing with a married man right now that may think that it can end to her benefit. And if each of us had to give these women watching advice today, what will we tell them from our own personal experience about how you feel and then why it's not going to benefit her and what advice would you give to get out of that situation? 
that makes me think about something that Jane said earlier um, with regards to the need for there to be communication about what's not mm -hmm. working in your relationship that you're sort of seeking outside of it. And along those lines, I think, you know, communication, we all know, right? Rah, rah, rah. It's the key to a relationship. It's what's going to keep you together. Um, but it seems to also be consistently the thing that we're so flawed at. And when Jing said that earlier, I thought to myself, would it be easier to tell you that our sex life is not as good as I want it to be or as I remember it? Or would it be easier for me to tell you that I'm sleeping with someone else? And so when we think about sort of what's on the flip side of what we have to say, to consider that. Mm -hmm. Because I think that at the core of many of our um, sort of beliefs about what would hold a relationship together for a long time, it's that want, want, want communication. It really is. And so what would you prefer to say? Which of the two would you want to talk Starting about? Starting with Jang and ending with me, what would you tell the women listening to the show okay. why you personally would not be a mistress and give them advice as to why the situation is not beneficial to them? In terms of answering that question, I, I, I raise another question, which could be my, my answer to your question, is um, how can a mistress who's been with a married man ever have the chance at marrying a man and, and, and essentially forming a stable relationship in which she moves from the mistress to the wife. That, that, that's puzzled me for the longest time for, for situations in which you know, a, a woman is involved with a married man. Is, um, would, would it be an abnormal lifestyle? Would you be questioning, is my husband doing the same thing to me with what I've done with him to his wife in the past. And um, for, for me, I, I feel like the mistresses really should think in, in the, what, what, what the long-term effects are. The immediate effects are glamorous and sexually pleasing. But the long-term effects is how can you have a family? How can you have children and have a future husband and live a normal life, a life that does not involve a, a mistress, you know? So, um, so uh, my advice is really to, to think into the future. It's difficult and it's probably unnecessary at the current situation, but, um, but it will benefit you in the long run. And I think as a mistress, you'll raise a lot of questions as to how practical and, um, and realistic is my current behavior, you know? Right. So that'd be my answer. I think that your answer, um really speaks volumes about your values, mm -hmm. right? And what mm -hmm. you see important. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that women who end up being mistresses sort of react to day-to-day -day life from that same place mm -hmm. that you can speak of. Yeah. And so if I had to think about what I would say to someone, don't do it. Don't mm -hmm. waste your time. You're, you're worth so much more. And for as hard as it is sometimes to sort of think that that right man or that right woman, whoever you choose to be your partner, um, sometimes it's hard to sort of think that there's someone out there for you. And I'm convinced that with time, it'll, it'll come. And that if you're a woman uh, who has issues with yourself, that this other person who you're a mistress to is sort of helping to feel better, hire a social worker. Mm -hmm. Work your issues through in a way that are going to be much more healthy. Because the truth is, is that if in the scenario in the movie mm -hmm. here, um, she gets with this married man because he's going to fill the void of her father, guess what? He's going to fill that void for a moment. Right. He ain't yours now. And right. guess what? Now you're looking for the next man exactly. who's going to come in. And so it creates mm -hmm. this like cyclical sort of behavior. And you may get stuck with one of those men who, yeah, you end up pregnant with, and now you've got this child, the man's gone, because now you're just like the wife and he doesn't want you. Mm -hmm. And so to sort of think about what it is outside of the physical pleasure that you seek from this man, and what is it truly that this man is sort of filling a gap within your life from, and fill it first before you look to get into another relationship. And that's what I would say. You are totally mm -hmm. worth it, much more than that man, than the issues with the wife, and anything else that would have to come of such a situation. That's the most difficult question. I don't even know if I can give a great answer, but I agree that you should either seek a social worker or some kind of counseling. The woman really needs help. He said that she had issues. 
and I, uh, whatever that means. Obviously, she has some kind of abuse maybe um, from childhood, and she was looking to him to help her. And I believe that she should get counseling uh, right away and be comfortable single before she even mm -hmm. goes out looking for her mate. My rule of thumb is, if you need to have your own cell phone, then you need to have your own man. Yeah. <laughs> because if you deserve to have your own cell phone, you deserve to have your own mm -hmm. man. And at some point, women need to take their time to look in the mirror. This woman would ask me, how do I arrive? How do I arrive? How do you know when you arrive? You know when you've arrived, when you, how many people's had that stare in the mirror? When you stop, you had that long, deep stare in the mirror, and you look down into your own soul mm -hmm. and recognize yourself as a person. You know, and you can actually befriend yourself and get what you need from within yourself and not need it from others. Mm -hmm. And if you're dealing with a married man, you need to stop watching this right now, press pause, and go have that long stare in the mirror mm -hmm. and say the same way I deserve my own cell phone, I deserve my own man to be there when I need him to do. The way your phone takes your calls, mm -hmm. holds your text messages, that's what it's like to have your own man and mm -hmm. you deserve it. We all deserve it. When you look in that mirror and you say to yourself, you look at yourself like a person and you realize that you are a person, the next question you ask yourself is, how can I be proud of me the way I'm proud of my favorite movie star, my mm -hmm. favorite actress, or my favorite singer? If you cannot stand up and be proud of the fact that you're dealing with a married man, anything you can't be proud of yourself about, you should not be doing. And there's your, just in a nutshell, if you can't be proud of yourself for it, your answer right there is that you should not be doing mm -hmm. it. You deserve to have your own man. You deserve to have your own cell phone. You deserve to be independent and make your own decisions and not have anyone manipulate you into doing anything that you don't want to do. And that's even from your past. You can let your past manipulate you. Mm -hmm. Doing things because of what happened to you in the past is allowing your past to manipulate you and manipulate your future. <laughs> so I think you should stop now press pause, go have that long deep stare, ask yourself what do you want from this life, and then secondly, to realize that you deserve it. Thank you for tuning in to WOPN, The Ugly Truth About. To become a member to view our upcoming shows, please visit our website at WOPN-TheUglyTruthAbout.com. True.